hi guys you welcome to my channel so today we want to quickly look at uh, electricity practical for 2024 y now i want you to pay maximum attention because one of the experiments that usually like been difficult for students to carry out and uh, also for teachers to be sure that the students are right before going for the exam is electricity however i want you to understand something about electricity practical for this level uh it's usually around ohm's law and i've said it before in one of my videos that all you just need to understand is the theory that surround that particular experiment if you understand the theory that's, that surround a particular experiment, it makes it easier for you to navigate and makes it easy for you to justify that your response to that practical is correct or not. Now, uh, I don't have any apparatus here, and uh, that's the reason why I'm going to be manipulating the results in a way that you will be sure that you are correct so if you also don't have apparatus or your apparatus is faulty then this video is for you you understand if you are a student watching this video don't cram anything because the question can change slightly and if you are also a teacher watching this i want you to understand this very well so that you know how you are going to pass the knowledge across to your student before tomorrow yeah, it's a very short time, but there's nothing we can do. I don't really have that luxury of time that we are used to have it before. However, I hope you find this useful. So I want you to pay maximum attention now, readjust your position, and let's get started with the particular experiment. So uh, all proofs uh, as regards what I'll be using to get my readings, I'm going to be doing that at the end of the video as usual. So if you can stick to the end of the video, anything that you might be confused about that, how did he get this value? How is he sure that this value is going to work? All of that will be explained at the end of the video by God's grace. But let's just go straight to how you can get your readings uh, accurately while carrying out this experiment. Before I go into that, if you are doing this experiment in the laboratory, that is, you have access to apparatus and you want to carry out this experiment, the first thing you want to do is to make sure that all your terminals are well clean. Am I making sense? And make sure that you arrange your connecting wires in a way that is not clustered. You, you can see them, okay, I want to use this for my negative, I want to use this for my positive. This one needs to be what? Very long compared to this. And avoid having a very long wire because that might affect your reading in one way or the other. And don't overthink or overassume the results you are expecting. Those are the things you need to put at the back of your mind for you to have what a successful result. Physics practical, as I always say, it's a very simple experiment. Don't pre-answer the question before you answer. Well, what do I mean? Some people, when they want to carry out experiments, they tend to go and check answer before they carry out that experiment. So take, for instance, the question I want to use for this particular video now. I think it's 2001, if I'm not mistaken. Or so. so some teachers will go and check the reading of that particular question before they want to come into the lab to carry out what the experiment, of which different factors would affect your readings. What they used to come up with that particular reading in that past question, it's not the same thing that you are using. And slight thing can change your value. But what we are after is there is a certain way that your result must appear for us to know that you are correct or you are wrong. That's what really matters when it comes to experiment. The value that we are getting is not really matter. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? That matters. How much is it increasing? How much is it decreasing? That matters. Do you understand? So, but by the time you want to go and check the back of the book and you find some certain value there, you start questioning your own expertise. Do you understand? So try as much as possible to avoid that. Go into the experiment with you just having the questions 
and carry it out, then analyze the questions. What happened here? What happened here? You'll be able to figure out what is wrong and you can master your piece when you are communicating it well to your students. So we need to make physics enjoyable subject for students to learn. Stop letting us making it a boring subject by cramming to come and teach and the likes. I pray God will help us. So don't let us waste much time and let's get started right now. Here is the psychic diagram that we are going to be using. Now, I want you to understand something about all these psychic diagram. If you are carrying out this experiment in the laboratory, all these lines that you are seeing here, they are wires. Am I making sense? This is also a wire, but it's not a connecting wire. It's a special kind of wire that is not coated. Am I making sense now? So this can either be constantain wire. A constantain wire is a wire that is made up of copper and the nickel alloy. Am I making sense now? So that's what they call constantain wire. So and uh, this one, this straight line you are seeing here is also a constantain wire that is on top of a ruler of your meter bridge. And also, you have, uh, this one has to be true according to the uh, uh, experiment. We are going to do that now. This is resistor of one ohms. If this resistor change to two ohms, then uh, just effective. But according to the question we are solving, it is what? One ohms. Now, I want to say something about what? Real start. Because uh, I was... Uh, uh, I think I overheard the teacher yesterday saying real start is to break voltage or to break current. <laughs> please and please don't always make whatever verdict or explanation that you are doing for your students. Don't let it complex to the point that before they can agree that you are correct, we need to now examine a lot of things that can even take us to advanced level before we can ask, okay, we can say it's for breaking voltage or breaking current. I don't know if you understand what I mean. For this level, secondary level that we have right now, all that matter is to go straight to the point. Are you getting where I'm coming from? So there's nothing like you calling uh, a real start to break voltage or current, no. A real start is a variable resistance. Am I making sense now? If I, if, um, if I put my jockey at a particular point, am I making sense now? If I put it at a particular point and I'm not getting value, me not getting value can be as a result of shortage of resistance. Me not getting value can be as a result of too much of resistance. For me to bring down the resistance or to increase this resistance when needed, that's the job of real start. Am I making sense now? And do you know the reason why you are going to have real start in this experiment? You are having real start in this experiment because examiner don't want you to overthink some certain things. Let me tell you what they don't want you to overthink so that you get to understand it before we go on. It's so um, unfortunate that I'm not able to carry this out in the lab, but that is the situation we'll find out. So maybe before next year, I will have get set to where I am and uh, set up the lab. All right. Okay, so what am I saying in essence is this. If you look at this constantine wire here, there's a resistance on it. It's, it has its own resistance. Watch you. This constantine wire has its own resistance. Let me call it R0. This wire that you are having here, either is another constantine wire or a copper wire, it has its own resistance. Now, all this conductor that you have here, they also have their own resistance. Am I making sense now? So the resistance you are having in this circuit alone, they are, they are of different places. This is another resistance here. Do you get where I'm coming from? In order to reduce our focus on every resistance that we have in this circuit, to focus our what, our main targets to this particular one that we are after. Am I making sense? That's the essence of having a real start here. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Examiner don't want to be bothered to be using all this resistance to justify your results. Do you understand where I'm coming from now? That's the essence in a nutshell. Do you get where I'm coming from? So enough of the, enough of the story. Let's get started. So I'm going to read the question out to you. Remember, I have a very small board and I have little time. So I'm just going to read it out so that we interpret it together. 
you are provided with two wires marked P and Q. So that means we are having two wires. So we have the first wire is marked as P and uh, the second wire is marked as Q. First up, a resistor RS, a resistor RS that's equal to one ohms, which is what we have here. All right. And other necessary apparatus. Roman figure one, connect RS in the left, in the left hand gap of the meter bridge, a length L equal 100 centimeter of wire P. So that means we have to consider the length L of wire P. That is, we are starting with wire P. Am I making sense? I'll tell you what wire P stand for when we start now and what wire Q stand for. That is the kind of wire that they are. All right, so let's go on. Um, in the right hand gap and the other apparatus as shown in the diagram above. Roman figure two, determine the balance point B on the bridge. Where, okay, on the bridge, wire AC. All right, so this is the bridge wire AC, bridge wire AC. So we are asked to determine the balance point L sub S. That is, you are going to drag your jockey on this thing where the galvanometer tends to balance that point we are going to record the the value there and that's what they call a b am i making sense now so that value a b is equal to ls and uh, the bridge wire ac so ac and the uh, bc rather so we're also looking for bc which is lp uh-huh so roman figure four Evaluate R1, evaluate R1 to equal LP divided by LS multiplied by RS. Okay. Then Roman figure five, repeat the procedure for four other values of L equal 90, 80, 70, and 60 centimeter. In each case, obtain the record. Obtain the what? Obtain and record the value of LS and LP and evaluate R1, blah, blah, blah. All right? Full stop. That's the first part of the experiment. So I would like us to do that first part of the experiment before we go to the second part so that we are not going to get confused. Um, I might need this diagram. So because I might need this diagram, I'm going to reduce uh, all of this to be on a row. Am I making sense now? So. We are, uh, we are starting with L equal 100 centimeter, and uh, we are to measure LS, and uh, also LS is equal to AB, and uh, LP is equal to BC, all right? So we also need R1 that is equal to LP, LP divided by LS multiplied by RS, all right? So these are the old thing that uh, we are to look out for in this experiment. So we have to measure the value for LS, the value for LP, the value for R1 as L is changing. Am I making sense? So how do we go about that? The first wire, wire P, is going to be constantine wire. Am I making sense now? So take note of it. Wire P is constantine wire, constant. Constantine and our wire Q is going to be copper. Am I making sense now? I hope you note that. Good. So we are using this. What and what do you need for you to be able to answer this question? What you should ask yourself is that how can I get the value of L? Am I making sense? And also the value of R. So if you look at this R1, this R1 is virtually going to be resistance of this particular wire. So for us to do that, what we just need to do is to find relationship between this L and what? The R. So how do we go about that? Let's assume that this uh, uh, galvanometer get balanced here. If it balance here, then we can say RS divided by LS is equal to 
Yeah, the resistance we have here, let me just call it arrow prime. Am I making sense? I don't know it, but let me call it up arrow prime. So R prime divided by from here to this place, let me call it L. Um, I don't want to call it LP. I don't want to call it LP. Um, okay. So let me just say it is 100 minus LS instead of me to call it LP. Do you know why? Because if I call it LP, I will have problem of making LS the subject of the formula. It will make it appear like I'm looking for two unknown. So let me just express LP in terms of what LS. Do you understand where I'm coming from right now? Okay, so if that should be the case, if I cross multiply here to make this one the subject of the formula, I should be having something like LS, is equal to R. Let me just say, I think that will be 100 RS divided by RS plus R prime. Yeah, I think that's what we should have. Yeah, so you can do that math. If you make this one the subject of the formula, you should be having this to save our time. Or let me check this multiply by this that's 100 RS. This multiply by this minus what LS. So 100 RS minus uh, um, let's multiply by this that's uh, that's RS LS, right? And this is equal to LS R prime. So if I take this to the other side, I have uh, 100 RS. So equal to ls r prime plus r s ls right so 100 r s factorize out ls if you factorize out ls you have r prime plus uh, r s the other stuff so if you if you divide both sides so you should be having this i hope you get that clear now right so i did that because of students not because of teacher so uh, i can clean this now so i've gotten the formula that I'm going to use to get my LS. Do you understand that now? Now, there's one big deal here in this formula that I got now. This is the formula I actually need because once I'm able to get LS, I can get my LP and I can get my what? My R1, isn't it? There's one between R prime and R1. So get that. That means in this equation now, we are having two unknown, right? Which is LS and R prime. So how do I get R prime? For me to get R prime, I'll focus on this constant wire only. Am I making sense now? So focus on this constant wire only. And uh, if I do that, all I just need is the resistivity and the diameter of this constant wire. Because if I can get the what, the diameter and the resistivity of this constant wire, then I can find the resistance. Because R prime is the what is the resistance of this wire. Do you understand where I'm coming from? So, and you know that the resistance of the wire is constant, irrespective of what of what we might be think of. Do you know where I'm coming from now? Except if we are changing the length. Am I making sense now? So, and since the length will be changing, that means we need to create a general formula that can be used for any length. However, the resistivity is constant, isn't it? So, and the area is also constant. The only thing that is changing is the length. So if that should be the case, I can now think of saying that resistivity is equal to resistance multiplied by, um, I think, multiplied by area divided by length. Am I making sense now? So if I cross multiply now, I can add that R is equal to rho multiplied by L divided by what? Area. So this is going to be R prime. Do you get that now? So this is the formula we are going to use to get our R prime. And once we get our R prime, we can get our LS. And that's just it. So if you are brilliant, just like you are, you can stop the video here. There's nothing much. So that's just the two formula you need to manipulate your reading. So I know you are expecting us to get the value of rho and also the area. That's the actual issue because this length is given in the question already. Am I making sense? Which is the length of this wire? It's already in the question.
So the only thing we need right now is to find the value of rho and also the area. Although the whole of the proof I said I'm going to do at the end of the video, I'm already doing it because I just want you to understand. And I think this is the best way you can follow. I hope you are. Let me know in the comment section. All right. So I can clean this now. You've known how we get this. So I'll just write this down as uh, R prime equal to rho multiplied by L divided by eight. So we're done. Now, for us to get the resistivity of a constant chain wire, what we just need to do is that it's a constant, but as a teacher, you can carry out the experiment just like I did in the lab. And how can you do it? Just get a constant chain wire and then start measuring the length, get a ruler. Place the constant wire on it. Am I making sense now? And uh, start measuring the length of the constant wire and the resistance of it. Am I making sense now? So when you start measuring the constant wire length and not alongside with what with the resistance, when you are done, plot the graph of length against resistance. Am I making sense now? You are going to have what a straight line. And when you are done with that. Pick up your micrometer screw gauge. With your micrometer screw gauge, you can measure the diameter of the wire. By measuring the diameter of the wire, you can get what? You can get the value of that diameter. And with the value of that diameter, you can use this to what? Calculate the area. And with the value of the area plus the length plus your resistance that you get, then you can get your resistivity. Am I making sense now? I know that is a whole bunch of message because I felt something is missing. I didn't tell you the apparatus you are going to use as well. So don't worry, that's how you can get that. So I did that and I got that my resistivity for constant 10 wire is, um, per, all right? The resistivity for my constant 10 wire is given as 5.1 multiplied by 10 to power negative seven ohms meter. However, if you check online, this value might be a, a bit slightly different from what you have online, but it's not really much. Am I making sense now? So it's still approximately uh, correct. So, and when I measure my diameter, my diameter for my constant wire was 3.7 multiplied by 10 to power minus four meter. Also, if you check online, this might vary because we have the constant wire to be in different uh, gauge. And once the gauge of a, cons of a wire is different, the diameter is also going to be different. Am I making sense now? Do you get that now? So that's that about that. So I have this to be my diameter. You can use it. Am I making sense? This is my diameter for the constant wire, 3.7 times 10 to power minus four meter. And this is my, uh, resistivity for the constant chain watt wire corresponding to this one. So remember, this resistivity I'm using is corresponding to this diameter. So if you go online to search for the value of the resistivity of a constant chain wire, make sure you also pick the diameter that is corresponding to that value you are picking. Do you understand where I'm coming from now? All right, so it's not as if I don't have access to apparatus here. Yeah? but they are not allowed to use those apparatus for my personal use. Do you understand? So that's why I only use them to pick the constant that I need in order to take you guys through this. I hope this clears to somebody. All right, thank you. So that's the explanation I have for you guys on that. So I have this, I have this now, so I can calculate for this. In order to save our time, uh, I already do the calculation for the area. So the area is given as 1.1 times 10 to the power of negative seven meter square. Now, for the sake of the student that wants to know how to calculate the area, usually my micrometer screen grade calculates in millimeter. So when I get the diameter using the micrometer screen grade, and when you're using the micrometer screen grade, please be careful. Don't let it collapse the wire because you know it's a thin wire. So if you are not careful, the micrometer screw gauge can compress it. So you have to be very, very careful so that it does not compress. So this value was gotten in millimeter. Then 
I divide it by 1,000 to convert it to meter. So I have my diameter, right? So for me to get the area of that wire, what I did was that area is equal to pi r squared. Am I making sense? So r is going to be, uh, you know, diameter is two radius, right? Diameter is two radius, isn't it? So radius is equal to diameter over two. So that's how I got my radius and I plot it here and I got this. Do you understand where I'm coming from now? So you can just divide this one by two. When you divide this value by two, then you multiply it with pi, then square this value that you got. Am I making sense? Like divide this one by two, square it, and multiply it with pi, you get your area. Should in case you are using another diameter and another resistivity different from the one I'm using here. Do you understand where I'm coming from? All right. So we're done now. We can now find our readings. So these are the constants that we need now. So let's start. Let's start, guys. Can we? Yes, we can. So let me use another marker here. Okay. So we'll find the first one when L is 100 centimeter. When L is 100 centimeter, what is LS? Okay. Um, we'll just come down here. Watch. When L is 100 centimeter, I want to find the value of LS. Watch the way I'm going to do it. So I'm going to come down to this equation here. I'll come down to this equation. Okay, I think I've cleaned the equation. This equation, R prime equal rho multiplied by length divided by what? Area. So this equation is what I'm going to use first. So what do I'm going to use it? So I'll have that R prime is equal to rho. What's our rho? That's 5.1 times 10 to the power of negative 7. Then multiply by this length. Remember, the length is in centimeter. Am I right? So you convert this to meter by dividing it by what? 100. That will give us 1 meter. So multiply by 1. Divided by area, which is what? 1.1 multiplied by 10 to the power of negative 7. Do you get where I'm coming from now? So if I have this, that will just be 5.1 divided by 1.1. So press your calculator to get a value because 5.1 times 1 divided by 1.1, that will give us uh, whatever value it gives us. Any ideas? Let me just say this is 5.1 divided by 1.1 multiplied by 10 to the power of 7 plus 7. Because this one will come up and this negative will change to what? Positive. So this and this will cancel. Whatever result you have here is the value for our arrow prime. I don't know. Let me check if my calculator can do that for me. So that uh, we can both look at things together, guys. So let me check. I think, uh, uh -huh. okay. Um, so, so, so sorry. Uh, I hope I'm not wasting your time like this. Okay. Where is this calculator? God. So, 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 so. so. so Please, I can't, I think probably because I'm in Ori, I can't find calculator here. Uh, I have a calculator here, but that calculator is usually approximating values for you. And I've tried setting it, but I could not figure it out. Okay, okay. I'm actually not seeing calculator here. Okay, okay. So anyhow, uh, I think I don't have that patience now to be looking for calculator symbol. Calendar. Of calendar. The same calculator. What's happening? Calculator. All right, guys. So don't let me waste your time. I can't just find calculator. Yeah? Um, so let me just. Drop it. So let me just use this one to find an idea of what we have. 5.1 divided by 1.1. So that's 4.6. All right. So I'm having issue now because it might be an approximate value. So R prime is 4.6 ohms. So this 4.6 ohms that you have right here is what you are now going to bring down 
into this equation here. That is, you bring it down to LS equal 100 multiplied by RS. This RS now is what you have here, which is 1 ohm. So multiply it by 1 ohms divided by RS, which is also what? 1 ohm plus R prime. What you just calculated now, 4.6, put it here. And that will give us uh, 100 divided by 5.6. Whatever results you have here is the value for your LS. And according to what I have here, according to what I have here, I have uh, 5.3 centimeter. Uh, uh, sorry, I have 17.7 uh, centimeter. So this will give us 17.7 centimeter. That's the value for LS when the length of the wire is 100 centimeter. Do you get that right now? So let's uh let's just have this side for our reading so i'll use uh let me use okay let me just use this green marker for the reading so when l is 100 centimeter ls is equal to um ls is equal to 17.7 centimeter then lp LP is going to be what? 100 minus 17.7. .7. 100 minus 17.7 .7 because from here to this place is 17.7. .7. So for me to get from here to this place, I'll just say 100 minus 17.7. Uh, .7. And that will give us what, guys? 82.3 centimeter. Am I making sense now? So R1 for this value is going to be what? Is going to be LP divided by LS multiplied by what? RUS. And that will give us 4.6497. Do you get that now? So we are done with the first reading. So the second reading, when L is equal to what? 90 centimeter. So when L is equal to 90 centimeter, how do we calculate? We do the same thing. So clean up. So first of all, find what? R prime. So find R prime. Our R prime is rho. What is our rho? 5.1 multiplied by 10 to the power of negative 7 multiplied by the length, which is what? 90 centimeter. Convert it to what? To meter. Uh, please, um, hold on. Please, let me to find out calculator on this thing. Calculator, yeah. So back to class, guys. Sorry. So 90 centimeter, if you convert this to meter, it becomes 0.9, isn't it? Divided by the area 1.1 times 10 to the power of negative 7. Am I making sense? So we need to take the ratio of this now. Just say 1.1, 5.1 times 0.9, 5.1 times 0.9 divided by. 1.1 then multiply by this and this will, will become one right so let's just do this so if i do it i don't know what i'm going to get for the arrow prime so this calculation is not here so let me just check 5.1 uh, 5 times 0 0.9 divided by 1.1 so that will give me 4.2 so that means arrow prime is 4.2 the calculator is given approximate value okay i need to install it oh okay so back sorry please so 4.2 is what i have here right so 4.2 is what i have then i can calculate my ls now so calculate your ls to become 100 multiplied by one you know rs is one then one plus 4.2 so if you add everything together, you have 100 over 5.2. So by the time you take that, you'll be having your LS. Sorry, we're supposed to use green there. Okay. So we'll be having our LS. LS to be what? Um, 19.3. And our LP will be 100 minus 19.3. That will be 
So R1 is going to be 80.7 divided by 19.3. Uh, I think, please, always put that in four decimal place. We talk about that when we are talking about the table. So I have 4.1813. So that's the second one. So I'll do the third one now. Then uh, I'll just put the remaining one down since you already understand. So let's quickly do the last one, the third one now. So that third one is going to be when the length of this wire is changed to 80 centimeter. So when L equal 80 centimeter, what is LS and what is LP? Then what is R1? Okay. So let's quickly do that. So what's the first thing we are going to do? Tell me. Thank you. So we'll first of all find R prime. So R prime at this junction is going to be what? 5.1 times 10 to the power of negative 7. Then multiply by the length, which is what? 80 centimeter. 80 centimeter divided by what? Divided by 100. That will give us 0 0.8 divided by... 1.1 times 10 to the power of negative 7. Remember, that is the area. So, the calculator is ready now. And that will be um, 5.1 multiplied by 0 0.8. So, that will give us 4.0, uh, 4.08, then divided by 1.1. So that gives us uh, 3.7, 3.709090. So just approximate it to uh, what is it called? One decimal place is fine. Uh, two decimal place, as the case may be. So let us put this two decimal place. Then the next thing to do is what? We are done with this. Let's find LS now. So LS is going to be 100 times what? Times 1 divided by 1 plus 3.71. And that will be 100 divided by 4.71. So we have them. Um, 100 divided by 4.71. Uh, that will give us 21 points. 21.23. So, approximately to one decimal place, because we are picking this on the uh, on our meter, on our, what is it called, measure, measuring instrument. So, that will be 21, 21.23. Uh, 21, sorry, supposed to use the green marker. Is it? 21.23. So, 21.23. So, 21.23 minus... 100. 100 minus 21.23. Okay, I said we should leave it in one decimal place. 100 minus 21.2. 100 minus 21.2. We have... Um, sorry. <laughs> What's happening? That's 21. Point two. So we have 78.8, 78.8. Eight. So what will be the value for this? We just say 78.8 eight divided by, divided by 21.2. And that will give us uh, 3.71, 3.71. Six nine. All right. Oh, okay. That'll be seven three point seven one seven zero. Yeah, seven zero. So that's cool. I hope you got this right now. So that's all we are going to do to get the all of the values that we are looking for. So we repeat the same thing for L equal to seventy. So let me just quickly tabulate our reading. So I can clean this diagram now. We have understand already. So let's tabulate the reading for this first one. So draw your table. It's good you do it like this. You draw the table for each of the wire first.
So serial number. Then we have the first one, which is L in centimeter, what you are given in the question. Then you have LS also in centimeter. Then we have LP also in centimeter. Then we have um, R1 in ohms. So remember, you can decide to show the formula for it, and you might decide not to. It's your choice. So this is one, two, three, four, five. All right. Okay, good. So what's our L in centimeter? 100, right? So put it down, 100. So this will be 100 in one decimal place, 100.0, right? So the next one is what? 90, 90.0. The next one is what? <coughs> the next one is 80, 80.0. Uh, 70.0. Please mind where you are putting your dots. Uh, it's very easy to be carried away. So mind where you are putting your dots. We mentioned that yesterday. So this is going to be what? 60.0. So for LS, it's supposed to be in two decimal places. I've made a mistake. Uh, I'm supposed to put it in two decimal places. Don't worry, I'm going to put zero at the back of it so that it's going to be complete. So but you understand? So that will be 17.0. Seven zero. Am I making sense? And uh, the next one, LP, that will be 82.30. And uh, this one is going to be 19. All right. Am I right? Yeah. 19.30. And uh, this is 80.70. And this is going to be 21.20. And the next one is going to be. 78.80 and uh, yeah so the fourth one i think i have that here that will be 23.60 and this is going to be 76.40 this is 26.40 and this is 73.60 so we can now find the value for all these ones now by taking the ratio you already know that we do that already that's four point. Put this one in four decimal place because it's a ratio that we are using to get it, right? I explained that yesterday as well. All right. How my mic is not off. Okay. <laughs> that would be a disaster. So, guys, let's go. All right. So, this one is going to be 4.1813. And the next one is going to be 3.7170. So, what's the next one? So, I think we have that here. 3.2373 and the next one is going to be 2.7879 all right guys so we are done with the constant value now am i making sense now so this is for what for yrp so we've gotten for yrp so let's go for yr what q now so for the wire q we said it's going to be a copper wire so you can decide to use silver wire, depends on the one you are using in your laboratory, but I think virtually everybody will use copper wire, virtually everybody, okay? Now, when it comes to copper wire, the only thing that is constant for all is the resistivity. Am I making sense? The diameter is also very. Am I making sense now? So the resistivity is constant, but it's approximately equal because if I'm using a copper wire that is um, 20 gauge and you're using a top copper wire that is 18 gauge or 10 gauge, uh, obviously our diameter will be different. And if I use that in experiment, my results can be approximately equal when it comes to resistivity, but it will be obviously different when it comes to resistance. So I don't want to go into deep into that, but just follow me. Am I making sense? What I'm trying to let you understand is that the constant we want to use, you can go on Google and get a different value from the one I use. Am I making sense now? So, but here is the one I use uh, as carried out in the laboratory. Um, so, we just need to change this value here. So, I've calculated my area. My resistivity is... 1.7 times 10 to the power of negative 8 ohms meter 
My diameter is 3.4 times 10 to the power of negative 5 meter for the copper wire I'm using, then 9.5 times 10 to the power of negative 10 meter square. So I've talked about how to calculate the area uh, previously. So other formulas remain the same. It's only these constants that you are going to change. Am I making sense now? All right. So when L is 100 centimeter, what is LS? And what is LP? So what is R1? All right. So let's quickly figure, figure that out. So that means we need to find our R prime first. So our arrow prime is resistivity, which is 1.7 times 10 to the power of negative 8. Then multiply by this L. We have to convert this 100 centimeter to meter. That will be 1 divided by A, which is the area, 9.5 times 10 to the power of negative 10. Am I making sense now, guys? So if I do, then I have 1.7 divided by 9.5. 1.7 divided by... 9.5 multiply by this is going to be 10 to the power of negative 8 plus 10 converting this one into this indices am i making sense you should know that already so 7.1.7 divided by 9.5 what would that give us so let's see 1.7 divided by 9.5 so that will give us uh, is zero point is zero point one seven eight nine zero point one seven eight nine multiply by ten to the power of two and that means this will give us a uh, seventeen point eight nine yeah that's the value we got for that so we've already known our arrow prime now we can find our what ls so ls is equal to hundred Multiply by 1, divided by 1 plus 17.89. And by the time you do this, you have 100 divided by 18.89. So what do you have? If you press your calculator, your result should be 5.3 centimeter. 5.3. So this is 5.30. So if I have 5.30 there, my LP is going to be what? 94.70. And my R1 is going to be this divided by this. And that will give me 17.8679. Do you get that right? Correct. So let's go for L equal to 90 centimeter. What will be LS? And what will be LP? Then what will be R1? All right, so let's quickly check. And that will be the last one I will do. I will just fill in the table for the remaining ones. You already understand. It's just a simple thing to save our time. So um, clean up this. Good. So we we'll first of all find what? Arrow prime. So what's our arrow prime? Arrow prime is equal to resistivity, and that is 1.7 multiply by 10 to power negative 8 multiply by l now is 90 convert it to the meter that will be 0 0.9 divided by a which is 9.5 times 10 to power of negative 10 right and this is equal to 1.7 times is 0 0.9 um mm, okay let's see so 1.7, sorry, 1.7 multiplied by 0 0.9. So that will give us 1.53 divided by 9.5. That will give us uh, 0 0.161, 16105. So that's 0 0.16111 multiplied by 10 to the power of 2, right? So that will give us 16.11. So we've gotten this. Then we can now find what? The value for LS. So LS is equal to 100 multiplied by 1. 
Remember, RUS is 1. Then divided by what? 1 plus 16.11. So if I do that, I'll be having 100 divided by 17.11. So what do we have? Uh, our result should be LS equal 5.8. So 5.8. And uh, LP is 94.20. And uh, arrow two. Oh, this is supposed to be arrow two. I know somebody must have said that <laughs> this is supposed to be arrow two because I didn't read the second part of the question. The second part of the question says, repeat the experiment with the second wire Q, obtain value for LS and L key for equal length of wire used in wire P. Evaluate arrow two. So, this is the arrow two that we are doing. Is that the okay? Uh, sorry for that. So 16.2414. So that's our arrow two. Am I making sense now? Okay. So that's absolutely fine. So we can now what? Fill in the table for the remaining ones. That is for 80, 70, and so on like that. So let me just quickly drop a table. You already know how to get that done. So let me give you the table for that. Then I have this second table here. Okay. So for students, please arrange your work in this manner. It makes it kind of neat because you want to avoid anything cancelling, cancelling in your work. So arrange it in two tables like this. So this is going to be L in centimeter. And this is LS also in centimeter. Uh, and... Uh, LP also in centimeter, then R2 in ohms. Do you get this now? So for 100 centimeter, one, two, three, okay, four and five. All right, so this is 100.0, this is 90.0, 80.0, uh, 70.0 and 60.0. So LS, ah, I've cleaned it. Let me just put everything down. So this is going to be 5.30. This is 5.80. This is 6.50. This is 7.40. And this is 8.52. Correct. And for LP, 94.70, and 91.48. So for this, we have it 17.8678. Two four one four fourteen point three eight four six and the twelve point five one three five and uh, lastly ten point seven three seven one. Yeah, so that's our reading. Am I making sense? So the next table you now want to draw now as a student is to you know, you draw this one first. So this is for wire Q. So you draw this one first, then this follow. Then the third table, you have to put them side by side. That is, draw them together. After you finish this column, the next column should be what? The column for L for, uh, what was it called? L for um, for copper. Am I making sense? Then follow by the follow by the follow. So that's how you get your table. So that means you're having three tables. So that your work will be extremely detailed and neat. So anybody who is trying to follow up can understand what you've successfully done. Yeah. So that's that about the experiment. So the question now says what? Plot the graph of. Uh, what was the question? Okay. Tabulate your readings. Plot a graph of arrow two on the vertical axis and arrow one on the horizontal axis. Determine the slope s of the graph. Evaluate k equals square root of s. So, um, let's see. 
if time still permits me today, I'm going to plot the graph of this and that of yesterday, then upload it so that I can see how to evaluate the value for K, uh, the value for S, and how to plot a good graph and avoid mistakes. And if I did not, if I did not, because I'm not sure, I'm running late already, you can check the description part of this video. I'll link uh, a video on how to plot graph to this particular video so that you get to understand how to plot a proper graph and evaluate whatever they ask you to evaluate from the graph. I hope you understand this now. Thank you so much for watching to this time. Don't forget to share this video. You know, we have a limited time already. The more you can share, the more people can get access to it. I'm sorry for doing it late. Don't be selfish. Help me to help them eh? by sharing, like, drop your comments. Either positive or negative, we address it in the comment section. However, I hope you enjoy this. Till then, let's keep solving physics. If you have a question you want to ask, uh, of course, you can chat me up on WhatsApp, 081 79 That's my WhatsApp number, and I'm going to respond to you as fast as possible. Peace.